This video is about chapter 9 on regression wisdom. Um, in this video, we'll introduce several topics about regression. We'll talk about a histogram of the residuals. We'll talk about looking at different subsets of the data. We'll talk about something called extrapolation, um, leverage and influence, and finally, the danger of working with summary values. Okay, first, a histogram of the residuals. Okay, in the last video, in chapter 8, we did a problem about breakfast cereals and sugar content. Okay, the residual plot showed no pattern, um, which told us that there was no curve in the data. There were also no outliers. And the variation in the data is was consistent throughout the data. Okay, um, we can also look at a histogram of the residuals. Okay, and what we want to see in the um, histogram of the residuals is something that looks similar to the normal curve. Okay, it should look um, something like this. Okay, now what you'll notice from this curve is that there are some things out here that kind of peak outside of what we'd expect to see. Okay, now that's not anything that would really alarm us, but we can kind of look at those um, a little bit in more depth. And so we look at um, different subsets of the data. Okay, some cereals are marketed towards children and some cereals are marketed towards adults. Okay, could this be an exp explanation of the lower and higher little mode that we saw in the um, histogram of the residuals? Okay, below is a scatter plot of the same data but categorized depending on which shelf the cereal can be found. Okay, the bottom shelves um, are marketed towards children and the top shelves are marketed towards adults. So if we do a regression equation for each shelf separately, um, those are graphed here, these lines, we notice that the bottom shelf and the middle shelves are very similar, okay? But the top shelf is very different than the other two. In fact, that's where we get um, those other little peaks from our um, residual plot is from the top shelf, okay? So we may want to report two regressions, one for the top shelf and one for the bottom two shelves. Okay, the next idea, this chapter has lots of separate ideas. So the next big idea to talk about is the idea of extrapolation, okay? The whole purpose of a regression equation is to estimate what the response variable would be for an explanatory variable that we might have, okay? So for example, here's a scatter plot and regression equation for the price of a barrel of oil over seven dollars from the year 1971 to 1982 okay it looks like a pretty strong linear positive relationship okay so maybe we can probably guess we'll keep going into the future now this regression model sh would give good estimates for between 1971 and 18 sorry 1982 Okay, within the range of data that we have, we can look at um, years within that time frame. Okay, um, it might also not be bad to use this to estimate the price in 1983, just barely outside. But if you go too far outside, like 1992, um, you might get a very different result in 1992 than you would get from this um, regression. Okay, so when we use a regression model outside of the data that we have, then the response variable could be very different from our regression model. And this is called extrapolation. So um, predicting a model outside of what we have data for is called extrapolation. Okay, now let's see what happens um, from 1982 and on beyond. Okay, from 1981, um, we have these two points we saw in the last graph, but then it starts going down. Okay, we did not expect that from seeing the data from the past 10 years. Okay, but then goes um, down. Okay, um, and then um, if you made a new regression equation, because this again looks like, you know, it's somewhat linear negative relationship, um, you expect that to keep going down, but actually um, starting 1998, it goes back up again. Okay, so uh, the point of this whole discussion is that you can't extrapolate data. You can't take a regression equation and use it outside of what you have data for. Okay, which leads me into one of my favorite quotes from the textbook. Um, if you must extrapolate into the future, at least don't believe that the prediction will come true. Okay, so if you extrapolate into the future, um, you shouldn't believe that it's going to happen. Okay, the next idea is about leverage and influence. This is mostly useful for talking about 
outliers, uh, but it can also be useful in talking about any point in your scatter plot. Okay, um, leverage points with high leverage are points whose x value is very different from the mean of the x values. Okay, so this point right here, this point does not have high leverage because its x value is close to the x value to x bar, the mean of the x's. Okay, on the other hand, this point right here would have high leverage, meaning it's far away from the mean x bar um, for the data. Okay. Influence are points that would change the regression equation if they were removed. Okay, so this point up here, now um, in 2000, there was a slight change in the voting procedures um, called a butterfly ballot, and the place where that was used gave an outlier, a pretty significant outlier, um, and down here we have a graph of the regression equation if that was removed or not, okay, and it gives a different enough equation um, that we would say that that point um, is an influential point or that it has high influence. So, um, points with high leverage are more likely to be influential points, okay? So, again, this point, um, I would not say is in very influential because it does not have high leverage, and it's not that far above. Um, this point up here is not influential. It does have high leverage, but it follows a pattern, and so it's not influential, okay? This point down here, I would say, would be influential. It has high leverage and does not follow the pattern. Okay, the last topic to discuss is working with summary values. Okay, so below is a scatter plot for weight versus height, okay, for a group of students. Okay, um, now instead of using this graph, if you decided to find the average for each height, because you'll see that they come kind of in all the, the height in inches kind of match up together, if you found the averages for each of those and graphed those, you get a scatter plot that looks like this, which looks like it has a much stronger relationship um, and would give you a much higher R squared value and a higher correlation and will look a lot better. But this is only because you are working with summary values, okay? And it throws away some of your data and makes it seem like you have a stronger relationship than you really do, okay? So you should not work with summary values. It's, it's very deceptive. Okay, and that ends this video on regression wisdom, just a, a bunch of topics um, about regression. We talked about histogram of the residuals. It should look like a normal distribution. Um, you can look at subsets if the data comes from different subsets. Uh, make sure that one or two subsets are not very different from the others. The extrapolation, don't use a regression equation for X values outside of what you have data for. Okay, the idea of leverage, meaning um, points with x values very different from the mean of the x values, and influential points are points that change the regression equation, and finally, don't work with summary values. Thank you for watching.